Okay, so today I decided to make a video on how to use Sandbox C+. Basically because I honestly couldn't find any good tutorials out there on YouTube or any other platforms. So basically, a Sandbox or Sandbox C++ is a Sandbox software that isolates software running on your Windows machine, basically. It's a very fairly old piece of software, but this is a newer revision or fork, according to the Wikipedia. And basically, this is what it does. It kind of, like, if you run the software through it, it prevents uh, data being changed on your primary operating system. So it basically creates kind of a container, I guess you can explain. So basically, yeah, let's get to it. I'm going to try to keep this short as possible. I'm not going to go off topic because I can talk about the software forever. So anyway, I'm going to download the plus version, the 64-bit here. I'm going to run the installer now. I'm going to allow Windows to run this application English. I'm going to accept this without reading it. I'm going to install this locally onto my machine. You can also do portable depending on your application needs, but everyone else just do local installation. Next on location, next on the name, next on this as well. And basically all these settings are all good by default. You literally don't need to change anything. Just maybe the portable option if you want to use this portable. Lee. Anyway, I'm going to run the application now. Hopefully it starts on top of my Edge browser, but not. Let's minimize it. So here you get a wizard. In my understanding, that's where some people have a problem. Obviously, you have two options here. Uh, obviously, if you're doing commercial business or enterprise, you're not going to be watching this, but for personal, you go for personal. And I do recommend getting the license. If you want to support the software, it's a wonderful piece of software. I really haven't found anything out there similar to this. But anyway, personal. Nothing needs to be filled out here. I'm just gonna just gonna go next. Now you have three options for the GUI. You have the classic, the original, the classic, I guess you can call it. You have the simple, and you have the advanced. I personally have been using advanced for many years, and I think you should also start using advanced. And I'll be showing how to use advanced. Uh, in this tutorial, basically. It's not that scary, you know, but whatever. And then for this uh, broad, for this mode, brightness, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's, it's up to you. Uh, keep everything here enabled. Here, don't enable this. This will make your system unstable uh, because uh, it's kind of still, if you read this, basically, it's kind of, uh, I'm not even sure. I think it's still experimental, whatever. Basically, it's a firewall for sandboxes or the containers basically, but anyway. And uh, yeah, hit finish and that's basically it. You get another window here. You don't need to do anything else here. Um, in some cases you might wanna enable access for your uh, access to uh, shared drives, but most people that are watching this are gonna do everything locally. And yeah, that's basically it. You finish installing your sandbox software or sandbox E plus. Okay, now, you can start using the software using this default uh, box or container. I personally like to right click and create a new box here. And I'm gonna call it Google Chrome. Google Chrome. And box type, I'm just gonna keep it default. There's many different versions here. Uh, you can like choose this version if you don't want uh, this particular box to have access to any other data on your computer. But just for starters, for beginners, we're just going to go default here. I'm going to go next. It shows you the location where the sandbox will be created. I'll talk about it later. Hit finish. Now it tells you basically if you're having problems using version 2 of virtualization, you can always switch to version 1 virtualization. But honestly, I never had a problem using version 2 virtualization. And my understanding, this sandbox right here, is actually version one virtualization, but I could be wrong. But anyway, so basically now I have my sandbox or box created. I already have Chrome actually uh, downloaded here and I'm gonna right click. And yes, I'm not getting this option right here. So there should be an option where you can run this executable inside a sandbox. And if you're not getting this option, just restart your virtual machine basically. I mean, restart your computer. <laughs> I'm using virtual machine, but yeah, just restart your computer. 2,000 years later. Okay, so my virtual machine is finished booting up. There we go. So I'll go to downloads. I want to install this 
piece of application. Now we have the option run sandbox. So basically at this point, you're telling your operating system, you want to run this executable within sandbox. Now you're going to get two options. Uh, you can use the default sandbox, but I'm going to be using the new sandbox I created. I'm just going to double click on this. You can hit OK. It's up to you. Double click is way quicker than hitting OK. Obviously, I allow Windows to run that. And at this point, if I hover on top, right, you can see the little, little yellow box around uh, installation right here. So basically, this tells the end user that this application is running inside a sandbox, see? Inside that container. And if I even click on a task manager here, oh, it doesn't show you that here. That's interesting. But basically, normally, I'll, it shows you like hashtags at the beginning and the end of the name. That's another way you can identify that it's uh, it's running inside a sandbox environment. Should get a installation confirmation here for some reason. I'm not getting that yet. I'm gonna open up sandbox. You can see also uh, the sandbox or the container we created, and you can see all of the executables that are running under this container. So that's a kind of a nice feature to to have. If you use simple version, I don't think these are visible. This is only for advanced. I could be wrong. I honestly don't remember. I haven't used the classic. I called it simple. I haven't used the classic uh, in years since the plus came out. The plus gets, you know, updates and stuff like that. But anyway, so it's finished installing. You can still see a little yellow box letting me know that it's running inside a sandbox application. Here, we don't have the little hashtags, but anyway, I'm gonna close this. A nice thing, when you close an application, it you can see that all of the executables are closed. If you use some, some other application and you close it, you can still see executables are running. So you're like, oh, what's going on here? Is this application now <laughs> listening or monitoring my activity? So that's a kind of a nice thing. And kind of one of the reasons why you want to run uh, your applications inside a sandbox environment, basically. So at this point, as you can see, I already have it installed. The uh, At this point, I guess you can see I installed uh, the application, the Google Chrome. So basically, this is the way you would uh, basically you would want to you know, launch your applications that you installed inside these containers. So you would right click, go run. Runs, uh, run from start menu, desktop, or program files. There's multiple ways you can access this menu. This is one of them. You know, click on your application, and here we go. You can see executables are launching. Here is Google Chrome running inside a sandbox environment. If I go to the top, you can see the yellow box or square, whatever you want to call it. Even if I go here, there it is. You get the little hashtag bracket or whatever you want to call it. Open bracket, hashtag, close bracket. Technically, it's not even a hashtag. Don't even remember the technical name. Number sign, I think it's called. But anyway, so that's basically it. This is how you install and run, launch your applications. Uh, there's really nothing special to it. It's not scary. You know, I can right now close this application. And let's see if all of these executables are going to close. Yeah, they're all closed. That's good to know. Once again, I can... Uh, there's even another way you can open this. There's a, there's a menu... Uh, I don't remember. There's a, there's a shortcut you can have uh, where you can... Basically, click on it, select your container, and click on the start menu and, and run your program you installed. So that's basically it on how to install applications. I also want to show you how to recover files from a sandbox. So a lot of people haven't showed this on some tutorials I've seen how to re recover files from a sandbox. The start menu I was talking about earlier, I'm going to pin it to the task bar. bar. Ugh. So when you click on this, let's say I'm going to close Chrome right now, right? So you would click on this uh, sandbox, see start menu. You're greeted with the containers you have. I'm going to select Google Chrome right here, double click on that. And here's the start menu. Same thing as that, except through the start menu through a shortcut. And I can select my Google Chrome through desktop or program files. You can also run other programs that are available within a sandbox environment. But in this case, I'm going to be running Google Chrome. So here go, it launches. I can go back to the sandbox plus. I can see Google Chrome is running within this container. I can also run other containers at the same time. So it's quite wonderful here. Anyway, so I'm going to show you how to recover files, what I mentioned earlier. So let's say I want to print this Google Chrome page, right? I'm going to print it, print it and save it as a PDF. Hit save. And I'm going to save it inside my downloads, right? So I'm gonna actually see all files. So you can see that I'm actually able to see the files within this containerized program. So keep in mind, the way this container is set up, 
this container can see your native operating system files, but it cannot modify them because it's running containerized. You can still modify them if you allow it. So for example, I'm gonna save this uh, PDF inside documents, I mean, downloads. Hit save. And you get this uh, box right here, right? So normally, if you want this file to be actually saved inside this uh, download folder, you just hit recovery or you can just double click on a file. But I'm not going to do this right now. I'm actually going to close this. So I close this, but the file is not visible right here, right? Now I'm going to show you what I meant probably at the beginning of the video. If I open up a file browser, another file browser, go this PC, C drive, here's the sandbox folder. It creates another folder based on the user that is running this application. And here's that container I created earlier. It's a folder, again, keep that in mind. So now for some of you, this will look familiar. This is basically same file structure, just like uh, on your computer. Some folders do not exist because Google Chrome didn't really need to use those folders. That's why they're not existent here. And here's that file I saved earlier. Well, I tried saving it on a native desktop. I mean, downloads, but it's not available, you know, on this downloads, but is available here on this, uh, inside this folder that is specifically used by that container I created earlier, basically. You can also right click, you know, here, go to explore container, same idea, I can go in. Basically, that's why it says do not use. If you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna break. That's why you get this, uh, you get this uh, folder here, and it tells you do not use if you don't know what you're doing. Basically, because some people go in, modify things, delete things, and then this sandbox or applications without within this container or sandbox will not run. Basically, but anyway, back to this. So here's the file. I can actually open it, and because I'm opening inside this container or inside the container pathway it's going to be like this this edge reader or this edge application that is reading the pdf is actually running you can see inside the container basically i can close it right now and let's say i'm happy with the file i want to keep the file i would right click i can click copy i'll go to desktop native desktop paste it in and here's the file. I pasted it to my desktop. I can actually open it again. And you can see this time it's running natively within, uh, within the operating system. It's no longer open as a containerized application or boxed application or whatever you want to call it, isolated application. Uh, so back to the actual pathway of the container. Uh, another thing I want to show you, how you can recover files using a sandbox. So let's say I want to go back to, what was this option? Recover files. Here's the same menu from last time. So, and I want to actually show you something. So if you look right here, the file's still here. There's no file here. Back to this recovery tool. I'm just going to double click. Same, double clicking is the same thing as hitting recovery and it's going to recover into original pathway here. Put a double click, the file disappears. It appears here. But it's no longer here because basically it moved the file from here to here. Uh, that's another way you can you know move files from container to the native operating system location, basically. So yeah, that's the beauty of a sandbox environment. Uh, and that's how you use this application if you want to install an application inside a sandbox and you want to run that application within the sandbox. There's other ways you can use this application. Depending how many, you know, depending how popular this video is going to be or this tutorial, I'll probably make a few additional tutorials on how to use uh, Sandbox E+. So yeah, I guess thank you for watching. Remember, there's always a solution to a problem, and uh, I'm out of here. <laughs>